the manager is so demanding and he's got so many high standards that the whole squad has to apply to, which I think is brilliant. I think that's the way that it should be, especially when you're playing for a club like Man United. We all have to act accordingly and, and be professional in terms of everything that we do. And he's like, amazing. Well, give us an that. example of what those high standards look like. Timings. He's massive on his timings. He's massive on everyone being the same and looking similar in terms of the group tracksuits. Everyone wears the same clothes and stuff like that. So, And all them things contribute towards a good team in terms of everyone's... No one's a big ego or no one's got this, that or the other. Everyone's in it together and, and pushing the right way. And um, Little messages like whenever you do come on against Brentford, go on and show yourself and, and show why you should be playing and stuff like that messages that I've always responded to too well and for for me I just wanted to show him that I can do it and he's obviously an amazing manager with with great tactical dimensions to his to his game. It's some of the things that he says and how he conducts his meetings are are brilliant. Um and I just want to be a part of that. And what are you thinking as you come on? Because it's it was a tricky start to the season, right? Not starting mm -hmm. as many games as you would like, not being as involved as you would have wanted. And as mm -hmm. we've established, you're the kind of guy with this ferocious mindset, like you want to be starting and impacting every single game. Yeah. So what are you thinking as you run on, having been through that? Whenever you're not playing, like you, you can't take it too personally. And maybe at points I did where I thought like, whatever, I'm not playing and so on. It is hard. It is probably one of the most challenging times in your career, but even if you do have times in and out of the team, you have to be aware of the group that you're in and other players feel the same and stuff like that. It's not just all about me, me, me. And you have to be conscious that everyone wants to play every single game. So whenever you are given the opportunity, you need to take it. And that was literally all that I was thinking about in that moment coming on against Brentford. And to be honest with you, it goes that fast that you're not thinking anything. You just want to win. <laughs> It, it, people come on and say, oh yeah, I was thinking that I was going to score two goals and run away and everything's rosy. It's not like you go on and it's happened so quick that, and then it happens and you're happy. But then you said something really interesting afterwards in your interview. You said, I just want to prove what I can do. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you've been at Man United for 21 years. You're yeah. You still have this feeling of, I want to prove what I can do? Yeah, 100%. It's a self-doubt. You always have to prove yourself at the club because they'll just go and get someone who's better. And you have to prove that hopefully they're not and that you can be the one who who helps the team as much as possible moving forwards. So yeah, definitely you have to prove yourself every training session, I would say. I, I feel I genuinely feel like that. That you have to you have to prove yourself every training session. If you don't, the opinions might start changing a little bit and then you always have to be there. Let me take you back to Jose Mourinho. Yeah, because he's the kind of manager and you would have seen this with your teammates and with him at other football clubs as well. He's the kind of manager where you're you're in or out, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a moment where you would have realised, hold on, I'm in here. I mean, I remember him calling you the special boy. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's the special <laughs> one referring to you as the special, God, as the special boy. <laughs> How did you feel when you heard that? Yeah, I think obviously it was it was nice to hear that, but he might be testing the rest of the group by thinking... He's one of the ones who's trying his best and he's there all the time and he's training properly all the time. And he's maybe referring to me as it's a little bit extra, isn't it? Like, <laughs> whenever I heard it, I was like, yeah, it's, he's maybe just it? trying to send a message to the rest of them yeah. to maybe get their, get their act, to, act together and, and start performing properly. And you can never get too carried away because you'll get humbled so quick. How lucky were you that Jose Mourinho came to Manchester United? Yeah, um, lucky like that th he was the one who gave me my chance and who saw something in me that was um the potential to play in the first team and and have a career in my united's first team for the last five years so yeah i mean to elaborate on that i would say very fortunate in that respect and i owe him a great deal my family love him they think he's a, a character he's he's a showman and he was the one who would tell us stories and stuff like that, which whenever you're a young kid and you're coming up and you're hearing the manager speak so openly with these players, but also being so demanding, so there was a fine line, yeah. was great for me and I loved that. What would you be comfortable to share though that, that is, I guess, the, the private education that Jose gave you? Like we saw the press conferences where he praised you. We saw the games where he picked you. What did he do behind the scenes for you that really impacted you? There was a lot in terms of the time whenever I was going to play for Scotland and I already knew that I wanted to play for Scotland because 
my what, my grandpa seeing me play for Scotland and walk out at Hamden Park was it gives still gives me good thoughts now even spe- speaking about it, which is obviously for my father as well. Like them moments whenever I go up and see them and the smile on the face, their life is literally around their grandchildren, and for me to see that really does make me happy. So he was at the time Jose was um, the manager, and he was just saying, "Go with your heart, and whatever you want to do, you can do." And I'm always here if you need to knock on my door and speak to me about any decisions that you've got to make. I believe he's coming up to see you or he might be coming up to see you if you want them both not to see you, then fine, no problem. And I just said, yeah, thank you so much and I appreciate that kind gesture and um, already had my mind made up, but it was the fact that he was there for me and and, and it was it, it was there for me. It wasn't just saying it tongue-in-cheek, you know what I mean? He was actually saying, you need to knock on my door, come and knock on. And did you ever... Yeah, sometimes about certain things, whenever he left, um, I saw him in the corridor and he invited me in and I was just like, didn't really know what to say to him because I was obviously, I was gutted to be honest with you. Whenever what, you mean left. after he left United? Well, as he was leaving, I was right. walking into his office as he was... Um, well, on the day when he was... On the day, yeah. Um, and I so walked. did you know he was leaving? How is that communicated to the players? Just how it is with any other club, to be fair, like, you end up finding out through the people who sort you out in terms of your schedule and stuff like that. They'll relay a message or something like that. But um, whenever he was leaving on that day, I walked up and seen him in his office and it was hard like, because I was like, this guy has meant so much to me and he's given me all my dreams that I, I could have ever wished for in terms yeah. of playing for the first team and now he's gone. So I was like, Phew. I didn't know what to think. I was like, um and ah in. The self-doubt came in. New manager comes in. Can I do it? What's going to happen here, here and here? What did you say to him on that day? Just said, thank you so much for the opportunity and you've been a real life legend for me and I can't thank you enough and good luck on what you do next and I'm always on the phone. Not that he needs me, but um, if you ever need to text me about anything yeah. or some tickets for some Scotland games, let me know. Are you kept in touch? Yeah, sometimes. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. He'd, um, maybe if you had a good game or something like that, he would let you know and really? say, well done, kid, as he always calls me. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, that was, yeah, they were great times and so, so grateful for him. What would you reflect on as the biggest thing you learned from him? The power of self-belief. Yeah. Go on. Because he instilled that in me. He, he was like, he would s- sit next to you sometimes in the canteen and he'd be like, you ready? The legs are tired. And I was like, no, no, no. He was like, your legs look like they're tired. And I'll be like, no, 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 they're not. They're fine. And he was like, and walk off. So then you're like, <laughs> are my legs tired? <laughs> and then it's just that self-belief that comes at you. And you think like, Do you know what? I'm going to show him that I'm fresh and I'm ready. I'm ready to play. 